It's going to give y'all what God laid on my heart. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12, BSB version. The body is a unit, though it is compromised of many parts, and although its parts are many, they all form one body. So it is with Christ, for in one spirit we are baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. For the body does not consist of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the members of the body, every one of them, according to his design. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, they are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor can you, he, head, say to the feet, I do not need you. On the contrary, the parts of the body seem to be weaker or indispensable, and the parts we consider less honorable, we treat with great greater honor, and our unrepresentable parts are treated with special modesty, whereas our presentable parts have no such need, but has composed the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lack it, so that where it should be no division in the body, but the members should have mutual concern for one another. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. So as you can see in the picture, it's a picture of uh, the movie Civil War. So you don't have all the Avengers there, but this is like the body of Christ. We got folks that uh, go to church and they got a problem with folks to stop going to church. We got to do better because last time I checked, we all supposed to be on the same team. First Corinthians 14 and 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as it is in all the churches of the saints. See, we got to understand that this quarantine is like a spiritual timeout. But imagine playing a football game. So or in a football game or a basketball game or wherever and somebody calls a timeout. So you want to regroup. And then refocus and they get back into the game. But imagine lightning strikes. And so they stop it. So they stop it for like 45 minutes. So you can't resume the game. And this is what happened. A lot of us got sleep and we really don't study. So during this quarantine, what we should be doing, we should be studying to get better. We should study his word. He never told us to read the word. He told us to study it. Really? Because watch this. What we got to do is when the churches open back up. Those that are coming in, we need to know how to love them. And those that are coming in, those individuals, you know what we need to do? We need to learn how to love those individuals that are in the church. Why? Because it's very simple. If we study his word, see a lot of people get moved when certain people in the church act a certain way. But what did God say? Matthew 17, 7, 7, 21. Matthew 7, 21. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord is going to heaven. But only those to do the will of my father. Verse 22, they're going to say, but we prophesied in your name. But we cast out demons in your name. And we had the faith to move mountains. Verse 23, he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Because see, church attendance ain't going to get you in heaven. It's going to be your obedience. Now, some people be like, yeah, that's right. That's why I don't go to church. No, nah, you're supposed to go to church. That's why the word says, don't forget to seek the assembly of the saints. See, so listen, what we got to do is see. We all on the same team. And like God said, he is not the author of confusion. So who you think was the author? Hmm. It was the real enemy causing division. Making sure that certain people don't come back to church and, and telling everybody, oh, we just going to call it church hurt. When in reality, how are you going to call it church hurt? When there's certain individuals in the church, it's not the whole church. It's not the whole body. We see that. But that's how we say it. Just like if somebody goes to the hospital and they get hurt by a doctor or a nurse, they don't say Oh, man, I experienced hospital hurt. No, nah, you just don't deal with that doctor no more. But what we got to do, we got we to gotta pray for one another. So when God opened these churches back up, you should be studying because you should come out at a better version. And God stopped a lot of it because a lot of people were just talking about that. They were just having church like they like just just normal without the Holy Spirit, because if we really had the Holy Spirit or if we really allowed the Holy Spirit to fully just reign. Because I remember, you know, DJing multiple times and parties and stuff like that when I was younger and stuff like that, you know, playing all types of music and everything like that. People always wanted me to play one more song. 
And they'd be like, look, man, could you play one more song? I'm like, yeah, man. All right. After that, I'm gone. Play one more song. Party rocking. Listen, they'd be like, yo, look, play one more song. Listen, I'm trying to go home. See, we wasn't we wasn't trying to people wasn't trying to leave. They was trying to stay. And so we got to get back to that. Galatians 5 and 25 says, since we live by the spirit, let us stay in. Let's let us keep in step with the spirit. And that's what we got to do. So during this quarantine, you should come out a better version of you. And if you already saying, you know what, I'm cool. Like I know how I love people. Then you need a refresher course. Make sure you go back over that word because the Bible says, study to show that self approve because we should be praying for one another. We should be praying for the ones that stop going to church and we should be praying for the ones that still in church. That's so in discord. Hmm. Yeah, we got to reevaluate the body because last time I checked, we was on the same team. So this is just a spiritual uh, mandate. I'm just giving you what God told me to tell you. This is what we got to do better because the churches should be full. But to some got to stop playing church. And like I said, in that and that thing, that's what it was. Civil war. That's what it is. We still fight each other. Some of the people miss church. They they miss going to church. But because some people was playing church, they like, man, I don't want to go to church, man. Look how they be acting, man. They hypocrites. If you really, truly study the word, it will tell you about God's people, how they can be. It will tell you about that. It will tell you about the ones that stop going to church and say, you know, this is why I don't want to do that. But again, <laughs> who is your author? Like God said, I am not the author of confusion. So if you go to church and you see somebody doing something they ain't got no business doing, pray for them. And if you stop going to church, you should be praying for them individuals. And if you were the one that was causing something or you did something, wherever, make sure you repent. Because we got to get this thing right. Because when they open back up, yeah, shouldn't go back to normal. Because <laughs> God said, I'm coming back for a church without what? A spot or wrinkle or blemish. Come on now. We got to do better. We supposed to be on the same team. And yes, I experienced some things by certain people, but you know what? I prayed for them. And when they got better, I said, okay, God, I see you working. Because God said, what in his word, whatever we do in secret, I will ward you openly. Do we really want to see them get better? When Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Luke 23, 34. They really didn't know what they were doing. They were saying, oh, <laughs> he think he the son of God. Nah, fool, he is the son of God. So that's what we got to do. We got to pray for those individuals. Because we got to understand some of them are still babes in Christ. Yet they've been in church over years. Some of them are in leadership positions. Still babes in Christ. Because remember, spiritual maturity and growth has nothing to do with your age. It has everything to do with your obedience to God. So this is really just a spiritual checkup. So that's what we should be doing. Because when the church is open back up, we got to start loving one another. That's what it says. And you got to understand, too, that on some real there going to be some apologies that you may never get, but they repented to God because they were in their flesh. And they didn't know what they were doing. And like I said, what author was they listening to? Because the devil know the word, too. But he got a lot of us thinking, along with these demons, got people thinking, oh, you know what? I'm just going to read the Bible. Nah, you better study to show thyself approve. Man, so I just want to say that. So when it come, we got to do better as a body of Christ. Make sure you pray for those individuals. That's what we got to do. We got to pray for one another so we can be better. Do we really want to do that? Because if you ain't doing what God said, you ain't going to make it to heaven. And listen, if you make it to heaven, I promise you this. You're going to see some people that you ain't think should have been there. And you're going to see some people that... You can be like, wait, I thought the so and so make it. But he was a, she was a, hey, God ain't playing. <laughs> God is not playing with his people. That's one thing he will do. He will check his people. So this is just a warning. I'm just a messenger. So like I said, when, when God was telling me to pray for these people and stuff like that, I saw it. I started praying for him. And when they started to get better, I'm like, okay, God, I see you working. Because, you know, one time God checked me before I go. Um, you know, somebody had said something to me a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? Pastor, minister. And um, 
back in my hometown where I grew up. And he was like, you ain't going to be nothing in, uh, in life. You know, you just going, you just going to go down the hill. You're going to be like the rest of them thugs and, and niggas. And I'm like, why would you say that? You supposed to be a man of God. And so I'm like, you know what? Cool. I ain't going to disrespect you because my mom told me that she raised me better than that. So, so I just prayed for him. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, we just happened to be <laughs> Facebook friends. I don't even know. I just know when I first Facebook first started, I was just on that, trying to get as many friends as I can. So I must have did something. But anyway, um, so long story made short, um, you know, uh, he has said something on the post and uh, I didn't like it. So I scrolled, I scrolled past and the Holy Spirit checked me and was like, go like the post. And I'm like, no, nah, you remember what he said to me? And God was like, you remember you prayed for him? He got better. Do you really want to see him get better? Because last time I checked, we on the same team. And so that's what I did. I checked that. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, see, we ain't about to have tea and crumpets every Sunday. <laughs> but I'm going to pray for you. And that's what we got to do. So hope you just take that word, hear what God is saying. We got to do better. Because again, Churches should be packed. We should be praying for one another and really having church where folks come in and get saved and, and they say, what, what, what must I do to get saved? Like, I really got to do this. Come on now. Stop calling each other hypocrites and let's just pray for one another so we can get better. The Bible says what? How can you look at the speck in your neighbor's eye and you got a log or a beam or moat in your eye? On that, as always, love y'all. God bless. No more civil war.